Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. This is your first England related video as we gear up for the World Cup and that's it, the channel is shifting, we're going to put Chelsea on the back burner unless we get some incredible drastic news on something and of course I will give you my thoughts but it's all shifted now, everyone is gearing up for the World Cup, so much so that Qatar decided to pay some fans to be become fans of various countries I think over there that is the latest rumors I'm not going to say that is exactly what's happening all I'm saying is that is the rumor flying about and it's actually hilarious um so <laughs> I thought I'd mention that because we've all seen the clips flying about I mean unbelievable if that is the case unbelievable anyway before we get into today's nitty-gritty and I'm going to tell you my prediction on England and how I think they are going to do this world cup just like we had an easy route um, when you look at previous tournaments, are we going to get another easy route now or is it going to be difficult? We'll get into that very shortly. Before I do, I want to let you know this video is brought to you and sponsored by the OneFootball app. Make sure you download the OneFootball app for all of your latest to do with this World Cup that's kicking off this Sunday. Qatar versus Ecuador. You'll be getting a preview to that on this channel. Yeah, I'm giving you all sorts of content when it comes to the World Cup, so you guys are going to enjoy that, but the One Football app is where you get all your latest, your latest news, your latest squads, your latest uh statistics, fixtures, results, group standings, whatever you need. Plus, remember, if you are based in the UK or Ireland, you get access to Italian Serie A by watching an Italian Serie A match per match day and you get access to highlights as well so make sure you check out the one football app obviously once the season resumes you, you are going to get italian Serie A. but in the meantime world cup glory on the one football app download it now and enjoy let's get into this england england i've not given my thoughts on england yet i've not given you my thoughts on the squad what i think i'll tell you what i'm i'm a little bit oh uh, well the squad is basically what you expect but i'm actually shocked at a couple of decisions right one in particular how in the blue hell did Tomori not make it into this World Cup squad? I don't understand. How does a central defender who's played four games this season, four, four total, right? We are in a we are at a point this season where we've played numerous matches. Numerous matches, including continental competition, if you're taking part in the Champions League, the Europa League, the Conference League, whatever, yeah? Plus the cup competitions, plus the Premier League. Harry Maguire has played four and he's received a call-up. Tomori has been outstanding for AC Milan, won the Scudetto last season, absolutely flying, does not get into the squad. There is literally nothing more Fikayo Tomori could possibly do to get into this England squad but because of someone's name on the back you know I'm Harry Maguire and I'm meant to be the captain I get called up just because I get called up because I'm Harry Maguire it's not good at all it's not good at all I, I, and I, again I'm not surprised because it's Gareth Southgate with all due respect I'm not in favour of him being current England manager um, there's talk and there's rumours that Thomas Tuchel's interested after this World Cup please get it done get it done at least we'll have someone that actually knows what to do in a knockout competition on a consistent basis based on players within a system that he knows works. England, this World Cup, I would love to see play with a back four, play attacking football. Why? Because England have the tools. If England didn't have the tools, I wouldn't be so stupid to say, let's just go all out and try and play expansive, fantastic, attacking, po po poetic football. I wouldn't ask for it. Be asking for us to be a little bit smarter, a little bit wiser. Let's try and defend where we have to. Let's try and hit on the counter-attack if we've got a couple of outlets with a bit of pace. Um, if we're solid in midfield, defensively, physically, then yes, maybe we can focus on that as our strength. We've got so many ballers in this squad. Unleash them. Now we've got a couple of injuries in defence. I'm hoping Southgate is actually going to do that, but I don't think he's going to do that. So the fact that someone like Tomori's missed out, Harry Maguire gets in, shocks me. Not just that, we've had Tomori miss out. If I'm reading some names here, Tammy Abraham I don't really think was in contention, although when you look at the strikers that we've selected... We, we move, we move, because there are other names. Mark Gurhey, Ward Prowse, Ivan Tony. Now, Callum Wilson's been called up, and I'm all for that, because Callum Wilson's been fantastic so far this season, especially at Newcastle, he's been class. So has Ivan Tony, though. 
But I can understand if you're tall between the two, you can't take both. Cool. On that, happy days. The rest of the squad basically picks itself. Um, Madison has managed to get a call up, which is, I'm, I'm happy for him, and he deserves it. And it's actually quite outrageous that he had to be called upon towards the end because of injury. And James Madison makes it into the squad. This season, he's been fantastic. Is he going to play, though? No. Um, <laughs> and this is the thing. We go back to how I think England should set up. I, well, not just me, we all know he's, Scarif Southgate is going to go with three defenders, well, three central defenders, two wing backs, probably going to go with the 3 4 3 just for the sake of the 3 4 3 because that's the system we normally go to when it comes to England and it comes to prior competition, the Euros, the World Cup, previous. So I think we're going to stick with that. We kind of know what the squad's going to be, we kind of know what the team's going to be. Personally, though, what would I do? 4-2-3-1 instantly. This England team looks built for an attacking 4-2-3-1. Especially with Reese James out. You just know Trent Alexander-Arnold's going to be called upon as right wing back when we go to wing backs because that's what Southgate's going to do. But if we was a back four, honestly, right now, I wouldn't pick Trent. I would actually give it to Kieran Trippier. Trippier for Newcastle has been class this season at least. Class. He looks hungry, he looks reliable, he's captain material as he's been proving at Newcastle and right now he is on fantastic form and for a knockout competition like this, of this calibre, you need players on form. Confidence is high. Hopefully you get a blend that way. I would love to be able to see Trippier as the right back but we'll go to be honest, Trent fantastic we know what he can do right but right now just based on form Trent is not on it nowhere near it but Trippier is I would honestly go to that as I said I don't think we will when it comes to the two central midfielders that are in the double pivot Bellingham and Declan Rice basically picks itself that's pretty solid we just know that that's not going to be the case. I do think that, to be honest, in the double pivot, I actually think Calvin Phillips might have a shout because Southgate will probably play him. But Bellingham Rice is still something that I think we will see. Just in a 3-4-3, three, three, I'd rather not because those are your only midfielders. In a 4-2-3-1, you have two defensive midfielders basically in a double pivot, like those two can play. And then you've got one midfielder in front of them. Who's that going to be? Well, we've got many a names. Mason Mount, um, whether you're going to tuck someone in, whether it's going to be Madison in that attacking midfield role, whether you're going to get someone, I think Grealish, Foden are basically going to be on the sides, but you've got options. Rashford, Saka, Sterling, bring Foden or Grealish inwards, perhaps in behind the striker, because they can play there. You've got many options in a 4-2-3-1. In a 3-4-3, it's going to be that front three and that's it. And I honestly think we're taking away from our attacking talent that way. So we'll see. We'll see what Southgate does. But my prediction, how do I see this going? I've got the calendar set up for you guys. I've got this all figured out. And I'm going to tell you how I think England are going to root themselves through this competition how far do I think England are going to go? Well, let's go through it together and let's see how this pans out. Let's get into my England World Cup prediction. So, as you can see right now, I've got the tree, right? England's group consists of Iran, the United States of America and Wales. Funnily enough, we're going to be playing a derby at the World Cup. Never thought that would happen, but I'm all for it. This is the tree that can possibly get us to a semi-final. And I have to say, on paper, when you look at if we come out of this group, we have to play against the top two teams of Group A. Group A consists of, as you can see on screen, the hosts, Qatar, Ecuador, Senegal, and the Netherlands, Holland, right? Holland are definitely group favourites. I would say the second place will probably go to either Senegal or Ecuador. I personally think it's going to be Senegal. I've seen Senegal play. I know what they can do. They are deadly, right? When they want to be, they are deadly. When they've got fire and they've got they've got fitness, they've got the heat into their advantage as well because a lot of them are very, very used to that sort of climate. Ecuador from South America, I think, will be as well. But in terms of footballing quality, I think Senegal are probably going to get that one step ahead. Sadio Mane is going to the World Cup, although I think he's going to be missing a game or two, but we'll see what happens. Holland, though, 
Louis van Gaal's picked quite a, a, a decent squad, right? And you're starting to see a lot of decent Dutch players come through. I mean, Frankie de Jong is a prime example of the sort of talent that Netherlands possess right now. They are definitely going to be there. Qatar are the hosts. Now, Qatar shouldn't be too underrated, although I just don't think they have enough, right? At home, the fans and whatnot, yes, it's going to help them. But I think they might score a few goals here and there. I don't think they're going to win a game, though. So when you look at England... England, realistically, right, and I say realistically, we should be winning this group with ease. I think we'll beat Iran on the first match day. I think, well, I, I say I think we should be the United States, but you never know. And the United States are a progressive team now. They are progressing. They are starting to get bigger in the football world. They are starting to get some players that are starting to show what they can do. They are starting to get players playing some top leagues around the world. The USA team is levelling up. As I've said though, realistically, we still should win that game. Wales are the team that I'm looking at as the dark horses in this. A team that can shock England. Why? Because many of them play here. We know them. They know us. And I feel like on a bad day, Wales, well, on a bad day for England that is, Wales can cause us an upset. They do have what it takes to cause us an upset. Gareth Bell is going to have a chip on his shoulder, I think, and you never know what can happen. But England should be topping this group. So on the basis that England topped this group, what does it mean? It means that we play against second place Group A. Whoever finishes second in Group A, we play. If we finish second in Group B, we played the group winners of Group A. As I've said, I think Senegal will be the runner-ups. That's a tough game in itself. I have to, have to, have to warn you. Do not underestimate Senegal. If I'm looking at any other African team here, on the basis that I know the African Federation pretty well, and I know the Moroccan team, I know the Tunisian team, I, def I know the Ghanaian team, and I definitely know the Cameroon team, who I don't think are going to do very well. Can I just say that? <laughs> Although you never know, they might score a few, but Senegal are the best African team here by a mile. By a mile. They're the most stable. They've had a coach for a very long time. An ex-player, ex-captain. They've got a very good block, a very good spirit, a very good group. They are African champions and they're that for a reason. So England playing against Senegal. Don't be surprised at a shock there. England's journey can end at the last 16. It really, really can end at the last 16. So we'll have to wait and see how that is going to pan out. Later on, right... You start looking at the quarterfinal, the semi-final. That route to the quarterfinal looks pretty tasty. It looks pretty tasty. Can England actually get past the quarterfinal? Can they reach a semi-final? When you look at the teams that are there, that would we would have to play against, I have to say, I'm pretty, pretty optimistic. When we get to a semi-final, then you're talking about the Argentinians, Mexico, France. And even then, is that it? Is that it? France, I don't think I'm going to do very well. I do think that they're going to get knocked out pretty early. But I will give you my whole World Cup prediction video later. That's tomorrow. So tomorrow, watch out for my whole World Cup prediction video. But England have, if they want it, a route to a semi-final again. Just like 2018. And then we lost to Croatia, I'd say pretty stupidly. England just tired out and let in... I wouldn't say let in a stupid goal. Croatia played well that day, but England just... They died out. They died out. We can't have that happen again. But there is a route here to a semi-final if England want to take it. But that is as far as I think England go. I don't see England making a final. I don't see England winning it. And even then, England have to be on form. I have this gut feeling that we're not going to do as well as we did in 2018. The squad isn't as harmonious as it was. There is pressure on Southgate. Everyone is kind of a bit Southgate in, Southgate out. There's a lot of people that want him gone. Personally, I'm not convinced. I do want him to go. I want Thomas Tuchel or someone proper, proper to come in. So, as I've said, all bearing that in mind, which plays a part, I do see England reaching the quarterfinal and then getting eliminated that is as far as i see it going so that is my prediction 
Let me know down below how you see it going down. But that is my England World Cup prediction. So there we are. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see how it pans out. I will give you my entire World Cup prediction that is coming tomorrow, as I've already mentioned. So make sure you guys are here for that. And then Saturday, I give you my first preview to Qatar versus Ecuador. I might throw a couple of other games in that we have the day after, which is obviously going to be England and, and, and the rest um, happening that day. Senegal, if I'm not mistaken, there's four games that day. So I'll be dropping previews in the first part of the day. And then I will be dropping reviews after all the games have been played that day. So that's going to be the schedule of this World Cup on this channel. You're going to be getting a lot of double uploads. Make sure you guys are here for that. And I'll see all of you tomorrow for my big World Cup prediction video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash like button if you've enjoyed this. And I will see all of you tomorrow. Have a good one, people. See you then. Take care and peace.